Hi, I'm Louise Silk, and I'm going to show you a project. It's a cute little zip bag. It's made out of a repurposed zipper, a piece of fabric that's 18 by 11, a zipper that you're gonna repurpose. But maybe you already have a zipper that you wanna use. And also, we're gonna do, be doing this project by hand, so you're gonna need needles, yarn needles, and crochet thread that goes with the yarn needles. You could also do the project by machine with machine thread and needles, but also if you don't have crochet yarn, you could be using any kind of extra yarn that you have. If you would like for the younger people that are making this project, they might wanna sew ribbons to the top of the bag so that they can put it over their neck and carry it over their shoulder. You need a good pair of scissors seam ripper and some pins and we're doing this project in conjunction with the fiber arts international which is an exhibit at the society for contemporary craft in pittsburgh over the summer of 2019 uh, and i have a piece in the exhibit that uses repurposed zippers which is how we came about to use and do this project i just want to show you also a zipper pouch that I've made that's really made out of a lot of denim. You can use denim, of course, so you can just put your hand in there. This is another project that I've made that has made out of multiple zippers, three, and you can make then multiple pockets for the zippers. So we're gonna now make this project, any kind of material that you like, and a repurposed zipper. So we have a zipper. We're gonna make sure it works. You can zip it. But don't close it all the way because sometimes if you close, try to close it all the way and there's nothing stopping it, you could pull the whole tab off. So just close it part way and make sure it's working. And then you have your piece of fabric that's about 11 inches by 18 inches. And first thing we're gonna do is sew the fabric to the zipper. So we'll take the top and put it right sides together. And then I'll pin that enough to hold it in place so it will be easy to stitch and now I'm using this crochet thread it's really great strong wonderful thread and a darning needle that fits it and you can use if you use different yarn then you can get the size darning needle that fits your yarn and then I would normally do this single thread but I think younger sewers have trouble with the single thread because it keeps coming out and it's confusing. So it's just fine to use a double thread. And how you knot it is if you lick your finger and roll the thread off of your finger, you get a really nice knot at the bottom. However, that works for you. And then we're gonna do what's called a hand piecing quilting stitch, which is a running stitch back and forth a quarter of an inch from the edge. And what you do is you get the stitch in there, flatten it out, make sure it's flat, and then you go behind it. If you go in back of it, you create a little back stitch at each juncture, and that makes a very strong hand stitch, and that's the way quilters do stitching when they're hand piecing. Every time you stop, do a running stitch. Flatten it out. And when you get to the end of the zipper, you might have a little bit extra fabric. We'll cut that off later, don't worry about that. You take another little stitch, put your needle through the loop three times, Tighten it up and then you have a great little knot. Cut it off. And there you have it. You sewed the zipper to one side of the fabric. Now we're gonna take it up to the other side. Pin it and repeat the process. So you get two chances. And this time it'll probably be easier for you to do. Once again, 
Uh, I think I'm going to, I don't think this fat, this thread's going to make it, but I'm going to do it as a single, but you can do it as a single or a double. So you, here you see the problem that some people have is that it keeps coming out of the needle, but Flatten it out, go behind the little back stitch. You get to the end. Again, you need to make a little stitch so that you have a loop. Go through it three times. And this, now we're looking at the wrong side, but if we just turn it around just to see how it looks, the, that we sewed the top and the bottom of the fabric to the top and the bottom of the zipper. It's kind of like a tube here, right? And before we sew, the first we're gonna sew the far, the, the bottom edge of the zipper. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the fabric and just trim it down so it's the same size. Now say you want to make it bigger, then you'd have to add a little piece of fabric to the zipper part to make it bigger. But I think the zipper is plenty big enough. My hand will fit in it. It's gonna be about the same size as this. Well, it's even a little bigger. So it's gonna hold plenty of things. So the only thing now that you wanna decide before you turn it back to the wrong side is how much of this fabric you want to be at the top. And I think you just want enough just to have be a little decorative and you don't need the zipper to be all the way at the top because this is a very nice size pouch anyway. And by the way, you could shorten it if you wanted to. You could have made the fabric shorter to just have something a little smaller or thinner. But I'm just using the piece of fabric that I had because I think it's cool. And so now I'm gonna turn it back to the wrong side. I'm going to line up the edges. Pin it in place. And again, I have a double thread ready to go, except I have to knot it. My favorite part, making a knot. Uh, and then the running stitch, just to review it again, you start at the very edge, you're a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the fabric. You do this running stitch, take two or three or four stitches on your needle, pull it through, flatten it out, make sure it's flat. Then you go behind it, it's, a, it's like a little back stitch, and it, it really just helps to make the hand work much stronger and much more durable. So you can see there's a little back stitch. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little back stitch there. And we're gonna keep going, running stitch. Take that other little back stitch all the way through the fabric. Make a loop. Go through it three times. Tighten it up. Cut your thread. And now we're going to move it back to the right side. Just pull out the corners. And now the final stitching is a decorative stitching. It's something that you can see. Uh, and if you see here, I did what I call it. This is an embroidery stitch. It's called a stem stitch. I'll show you that, but you could do a buttonhole stitch. You could do just the same stitch that we that I showed you before, the running stitch with a back stitch. But again, now you want to make sure that you be sure that you pin the, the fabric so that you get all the edges matching up. And again, I'm worried about 
thought that I won't have enough thread and I want to do it in one, so I'm going to do it single, but I'm going to hide the knot inside here to start. And then uh, a stem stitch is you're always going, the stitch, you're going the stitching this way, but the needle always goes facing the other way. And it creates kind of an overlap so that it's, it makes what's called a stem. It's usually they use it on flowers and embroidery. So again, it just, it's kind of a pretty stitch. It's decorative, it's really easy to do. So you're st stitching backwards to the direction that you're going. And you're gonna do that all the way down. Now, when you get to the zipper, first of all, it might be a little bit harder to get the needle through, but also you wanna make sure, and this is particularly if you're sewing by machine, I have lost a lot of machine needles, but you wanna make sure that you don't sew into the zipper itself, that you just sew the fabric because the zipper is metal and it will, it will not accept your needle. So you keep sewing all the way down and then knot it at the end. So now if we want to, if you could be done, this could be the end of it for you, you're happy, Here's your pouch, put in your phone, your money, ready to go. But we, some people might wanna add a ribbon. And the, you would add a ribbon so that maybe you could put it over your neck or over your shoulder, or just easier to carry it around or not. So again, take a double thread. And take your ribbon and I would just put it onto the back the top and I don't know I am not sure what I would do I think I would just do again the running stitch up one side across I would make it into a square of stitching. You can measure your ribbon to make sure it's will work for you know for the size that you want it to be and then and also make sure you don't twist the ribbon so lean it straight out and now we can do the same thing on the other side up to knot this first That's cute. You could make this purse, you know, looking at it, like I love seeing the stitching on the front here. So maybe I might wanna stitch your name or a little, some more flowers, some more stems all over the place. There are a lot, you could look up some embroidery stitches and decorate it. Maybe you could sew on some buttons. A lot of fun ways to make, make the purse be yours. Just have fun with it any way you like. And there we go. One, two, three, four, go film.